Hi, welcome back to Virtual Boys. I want to talk about Thailand, more specifically Bangkok. I've just got back from a two-week trip to Thailand. Uh, not just Bangkok, went to Phuket, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. That's, you're not interested in, in, in hearing about my holiday. What I want to talk about is retro gaming uh, and more specifically retro game shopping in Bangkok. So when I was planning this trip, uh, as I do wherever I go in the world, I generally do a bit of research of where I can do a bit of shopping, particularly if I'm in Asia, uh, where I can where I can shop for retro games and where I can go and play retro games. So any kind of arcades, anything like that. And I guess Thailand isn't really known for its retro game shopping, but this one place kept coming up again and again and again. Uh, this place called O Corner. So um, I'll get to that. I'll tell you where it is, uh, what kind of stuff they sell, uh, what I bought from there. And then a few of the other gaming things um, I found around O'Corner. Uh, but yeah, the, the, it, gaming does exist in Thailand. It, it, it definitely wasn't prevalent, um, but uh, f- spoilers, O'Corner was amazing. <laughs> right, so first of all, how do we find it? O'Corner is, is located in MBK, which is a huge shopping mall in, in central Bangkok. It's absolutely massive. It's seven floors. It's a huge, huge place. I spent far too long walking around MBK trying to find O Corner. <laughs> it's on Google Maps. It'll give you an address, but I maybe I'm stupid. I've just kept getting it wrong and wrong and wrong. So as I say, this place is seven floors tall. Uh, o Corner's on the sixth floor. So I then made the mistake of hitting the seventh floor, assuming it was the sixth floor. But what I did find on the seventh floor was still cool. There's a huge arcade up there. It's full of uh, like Japanese rhythm games, dance games, um, a bunch of racing games, a bunch of like gun games. And then also these these areas of the mall where they've got old gaming systems. I say old. They've got gaming systems like like PS3s and Xbox 360s, but they're they're, they're hooked up as if they're arcade machines. You put in money, and then they've just got controller, you know, normal Xbox and, and PS3 controllers, and they've just got loads of games available on them. So yeah, like like an arcade machine. You're putting in money, I, I guess, to give you a certain amount of time. I don't know. I didn't use one, and then you just kind of go in through the the uh, the. XMB menu and choosing choosing a PS3 game that you want to play. Uh, a bit weird, but um, I guess that seemed pretty normal. They were everywhere in the mall, so that's that's. I found that kind of fascinating. Um, there was also on the seventh floor while I was searching for O Corner, uh, I found an Animate store. And Animate is a, a huge Japanese retail store that, that specialises in anything to do with anime. So if you've ever been to Akihabara in Tokyo, you will have seen a massive Animate store more than likely. Uh, it's huge, and uh, there's a really, really big one in MBK. So again, that's on the seventh floor. If you want to, if you want to do any anime shopping, buy uh, any mangas or, or anything to do with that, I wandered in there and bothered the staff, uh, showing them my phone with with Google Maps, which was obviously all in English, saying, "Where's this? Where's this?" And uh, they corrected me and told me, told me that I was on the seventh floor and that I wanted to be downstairs. So anyway go downstairs you're on the sixth floor the sixth floor of mbk is basically a huge market it's a huge indoor market just all kind of market stands selling like tacky tourist goods and, and clothing uh, there's a few of the game stores up here which are, will sell like modern things they'll sell switch games they'll sell ps4 and xbox one games um, controllers you know all sorts of things amiibo also i found a, a, a fantastic knockoff uh, snes mini called the, um, the super hdmi mini which, which, which boasted 621 hot games, uh, none of which I'd ever, ever heard of. It certainly wasn't a SNES Mini. But if you, if you find the Craft Village, that's what you're looking for on the sixth floor, you're looking for Craft Village. Weirdly, right at the back of this, between all the, the, the clothing stalls and the, the knockoff sports stores, you'll finally find O'Corner if you look hard enough. And you can't miss it. It's got a Super Mario World uh, sign outside it with O'Corner written on it. And... This place is absolutely incredible. No matter what you want, at this place it's full of Japanese games, it's full of US games. I've, 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 I'm fairly confident of saying I don't think I've been in a store which has got such an incredible selection of consoles, like retro consoles. Honestly, Okona has got such an amazing selection for this tiny little shop, which is in a huge shopping mall that doesn't really have any other game stuff in it. This place is so impressive. They had Japanese Virtual Boys, they had US Virtual Boys. I saw a Hong Kong NES, which I've, I've never seen before in my life. They had a bunch of Wonder Megas. If you've never seen a Wonder Mega, it's a, it's, a, it's a Mega Drive with a Mega CD built into it. They had about four or five of them. 
Uh, I saw a high Saturn, which I really want a high Saturn. It's a it's a it's a special edition Sega Saturn that Hitachi made. That's got a, a video card built in, so it can run uh, video CDs. It's like a little kind of rare version, a bit like the the the, the special GameCube that plays DVDs. Um, I saw I saw a boxed, unopened, like completely sealed, unopened US uh, NES power set from 1985 uh, that cost almost a thousand pounds, but it was it was completely mint conditioned and unopened. Uh, it's full of Famicom stuff, full of N64 stuff, whatever you're looking for. Honestly, I could have just spent days in this place. It's tiny, but it's just floor to ceiling full. I'm, I'm probably wrong to say it's the best selection ever because I'm sure the super, the super potato stores, you know, have it, have it. But it was kind of a surprise to find in a place like this because I'd, I'd, I'd just spent two weeks. I, I came here on my last night in Thailand, so I'd spent two weeks here and, and pretty much seen no video game stuff. Like, I don't know whether I'm, I'm, I'm wrong in saying this, but it doesn't seem like it's hugely prevalent, you know, like somewhere like Japan or even, you know, I've traveled to Hong Kong and, and, and I found much more gaming stuff in Hong Kong. So it's not just games, they've got collectibles, you know, they've got glass cases full of limited edition Street Fighter figures and Dragon Ball Z figures. They had uh, the, the, the Sonic from the special edition Sonic Mania pack. It's like Sonic stood on a little Mega Drive. Uh, just all sorts. It was, it was absolutely fascinating to look around. Uh, and I came away with only one purchase. So in between all the Neo Geo consoles and the, 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 the special edition Saturn consoles and the Pikachu N64s and the Famicoms, uh, I, I, I came away with only one purchase. I asked, I inquired uh, about a, a copy of Salamander for the Famicom, which if you've never seen the cartridge for Famicom Salamander, it's beautiful. It's this like translucent blue cartridge, but it was a little out of my price range. It's, it's really expensive. Uh, but what I did come away with is a, a box copy of Perfect Dark on the N64, a Japanese copy of Perfect Dark on the N64. And this is a game that's that's often really expensive because it just didn't sell very well in Japan. As much as Perfect Dark sold really well, and it was a huge game in Europe, huge game in the US, uh, the Japanese market didn't take to it. And it's, it, it, it ends up costing you quite a lot compared to a lot of Japanese N64 games. Perfect Dark's on the kind of the upper end. Um, and I got a copy here for 1600 baht, which is about 35 pounds in British money, which is which is actually a really good price for Perfect Dark. I mean, I've seen it upwards of 50 normally, 50 or 60 pounds. So, so I was I was really really happy to find that, and it's in great condition. It's got the manual, it's got everything in it. So super happy. Probably a lot of the other stuff that I did find was was priced more expensive than you'd find it in Japan. The shops mainly Japanese imports from what I saw. They did have US imports, but it was a lot of Japanese stuff, and it's obviously been the, the price is up because they are imports. Um, so, if you're used to Jap uh, Japan prices, you're not going to find tons of bargains here. But I mean, you're in Bangkok; <laughs> like, there's not much competition for this store. So, once again, if you're looking for O Corner, you're going to MBK, which is in central Bangkok. You're looking for the sixth floor. You're looking for craft village, so you, you, you'll essentially feel like you're in a huge indoor market. You won't feel like you're going to come across uh, a retro game store. Um, and then if you if you follow your Google Maps or you follow this map that's on the screen now, you're looking for a tiny store that's called O Corner. You, you will not miss the Super Mario World sign uh, and just the, the, the shelves upon shelves upon shelves of retro games. And I think you'll have an absolutely great time. Thank you for joining me. I hope if you're traveling to Bangkok, this video is useful. And I hope you I hope you find the store and you buy tons and tons of stuff. Uh, join me again for a future video. And uh, hopefully I'll see you then. All right, bye, 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 bye.